Okay, good morning. I'm going to go ahead and get started on this um, Charlois cow. It's one of my favorite breeds of cows. I first saw them when I went to a trip to Ireland when I was 12. And they are just enormous cows. And I might not be saying that word correctly. It's a French word. Charlet, maybe. Um, and I love the fact that they're white, but they have a lot of color in them still. You can see this one has some warm kind of beigey colors. And um, I don't know, I just, I just think they're pretty. And cows are one of my favorite subjects. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with some of the darks that I see. Normally, or recently anyway, I've worked with the transparent colors uh, to begin with. I have done a, a red background for demonstrations. This is the way I always painted, um, doing a cad red light uh, acrylic toned canvas first. I love the way it looks when uh, the red peeks through, especially the greens, because it's a complement of red. And um, I just enjoy doing it, and I hope you'll enjoy seeing it. I think the white will show up nicely against the red. And I'm going to use one of my new brushes I got for my birthday from my sons. I actually got, I'll show you the rest of them, some more. They just arrived yesterday. They're based out of England, and it's called Rosemary and Company. I've watched artists paint with them for years, and I always wanted to try them. And so I'm going to be using it today uh, for the first time. So actually, I'm going to pick out one of the smaller ones to do the darks, because I'll work on the eyes a little bit. mix my darks. Um, my, one of my favorite combinations is ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Another is burnt sienna and alizarin, but oh, the eyes are a little bit warmer, so I'm going to go with this combination. Um, I have them darkened a little bit here from the drawing. My apologies for the background noise. This is, it doesn't usually last long. This is when they do the, uh, the lawn in my condo community. And then it's pretty dark by the ears. Now these do happen to be transparent colors that I'm using here. I won't use them as much as I have been recently. I have a show coming up, the Norfolk Academy show that's local, and I'm doing this piece to put in that show. And I usually do my cows this way with the red background. Okay, so we see some dark under here. This helps to give some depth off the bat. Get some shadowed area in here. One thing I was hoping for with these brushes was uh, that they would come to a nice flat edge here. And they really do, so I'm hoping that I can maintain that, take really good care of them. Okay, so this side we have some dark areas, not as dark as what I just put in, so I'm going to create some of that value mixing. 
some of my St. Remy blue in with some of that dark that I just did. Let me just see how that looks to start out. I do many layers when I do these cows, so. And I do the layers usually all in one day. Like I'll do most of it this morning and then spend some time after it sets up a little this afternoon. I'm not sure how well you can see this with the light on it. You can see some of that blue. I'm gonna add a little bit more in for some of these places here. And I'm using some liquid. Um, probably going to use this brush for quite a bit. I I just take the color off in between using a paper towel, and then I just like to swish it in some turpentine and get the rest out. So I'm seeing some orange. So I'd like to use. Um, I have an azo orange here. Use some of that in there. I might use some red as well. Yeah, I will use some of that transparent red in here, which is a beautiful color, Rembrandt, red medium. And see some going around the eye here. There. And then I said I'd put some in here, so I'm going to do that too here. In the ear. A little bit over here. Okay. Now I didn't put out one color. I was going to use on his face is a titanium buff. I have titanium buff and the other one that I have out is unbleached titanium. Different brands and um, the titanium buff has a slightly more greenish tint to it. I kind of see that more. Here, I'm going to do it. First layer of it here in a second. Then get all that red out. Still do have some red in it. There we go. My strategy is to get. Some color down just right in the beginning just get some color on everything I 
I just realized today for a lot of people, is this, is this spring break for a lot of people? I don't know. Maybe not. No, I guess it isn't. I saw kids at the bus this morning. I walk my dog. This is kind of quiet on here today. <laughs> Except it's not quiet outside my house right now. I closed the curtains so my dog wouldn't get upset when she saw them, but she's still woofing a little. We'll see. Hopefully she won't get going. That will be a crazy. I think he's starting to come to life here. Uh, next, I'm going to use some warm white which is a bit lighter for some in this area here and then that gets a little cooler on that side so I'll do, I think I'm gonna use some gray. Put in here. supposed to be really warm today here anyway it's crazy we had a freeze warning the last few days and um, and then today it's supposed to go up to 70 I believe okay we'll put some of that gray down in here camera keeps shaking it's I have this canvas lamp that it hooks into and I'm, I guess because of my I'm working on a table when I do the brushes it shakes the table which then shakes the lamp so I'm trying to hold on to the cord now see if I can slow it up a little needs to go a little darker okay so now I'm going to focus a little bit with some of the transparent orange oxide which is a little darker value here And then use some opaque over that. I have two different colors I'm going to try. I'll use the Montserrat, hold on to that, Montserrat orange. Well, first, I'll put a little into that. Oh, that's cool. And then in here. I'm liking this brush so far. I think I could put some of that Maserat orange up in here too. I just like to, when I put a color down, see where else I can put it. 
to move around the canvas. Here I see some of that. We go back some of this in here. Let's see if I can hit some of the places that I didn't get before. This is the titanium. So I'm going to do a uh, switch brushes to my other, my larger rosemary brush. It's so fun to have new toys to play with. And I will use a transparent in the background. Uh, um, oh gosh, my brain is not engaging. I need to get this second cup of coffee into me. Um, sap green. Rembrandt sap green. get some color in that background. I didn't pre-mix any colors this week. Uh, as we know, I've been just trying to do that, but it's not something I have regularly done. I think I like to just fly by the seat of my pants more, I guess. One color I have, I know I have it, Maybe it got mixed in with some of my acrylic colors downstairs, I don't know, but it's Indian red that I use inside the eyes, and I was just searching like crazy this morning for it. I always find it when I don't need it, but um, so I might need to improvise. Would I, I either use English red or, what did I just say, In English red or Indian red? They're very similar, but they make a nice glint of like reddish brown in the eye. Um, so I might just need to fudge a little bit with burnt sienna, maybe with a little bit of orange mixed with it for today, until I can find. It's maddening. I have these great organizational racks now. Oh, I just stuck that in burnt sienna. Let's see. Let's see if I can show you my racks. See, aren't they cool with all my paints and everything? So you would think I could find that color, but it's like the only color I can't find, the one I need.
So even though that not that much red is going to show through, isn't it neat that it looks like that? I, I just love it. Okay. What to do next? Okay, I think what I'm going to do next is do a little bit of the the snout, I guess you would call that right there. And use some Naples um, Naples Orange. And what it's called from it used to be called flesh color. And, and it's just like a good light for this right here, for what's going on here. And I'm gonna mix some more dark with the uh, Ultramarine blue, the burnt sienna. See where I can tighten up the darks again. That's always a good plan when you're not sure what to do next because it helps you with your contrasts and kind of to see where it would be a good place to go next. And their eyes really are on the sides of their head, so you don't see, you know, large eyes facing you like with people. So you want to make sure they're right at the edge. And then this is where their bone structure kind of creates shadowing. If you've ever seen a cow skull, you know, I mean, if you paint enough of them, you start to kind of know where all these things are. Oop, a little crazy there. I'm going to put some more dark in here. Oh yeah, see how that gives it a little bit of, um, like a turning there. Uh, you can see the depth. All right. I'm gonna add some more orange in. Whew, that is orange, isn't it? I'm gonna mix some with the uh, Rembrandt red. I don't put the tags in, so I just like to put some color in here. I just think that's, I don't know. Okay, and we'll do some dark in here. some of that shadowing there. I think it sounds like it's settled down a little outside, thankfully. Okay, I'm gonna take some more of that St. Remy blue then and put some in here. Where the 
just kind of some shadows. The hair is creating shadows. Need to go a little bit darker in here. Where it curves under. All right, I'm going to do a little bit more work on that eye because you know I like to get them. Um, kind of talking to me a little bit. <laughs> I'm mixing a little bit of orange with the transparent orange. See if I can get close to what I was going for with that Indian red or the English red. You can kind of see what I mean. It creates, it wouldn't be as much on this side because it's in shadow, but I'll put a little bit there anyway. And I'm gonna put a little bit of a flicker in there of light. On a cow, it kind of goes in that direction because it's not straight on. Oh, heck. Let's see. Okay, I'll do that again. Put some more of that orange in there. Okay, so the eyelashes are very important. Cows have the most prettiest eyelashes. It's just not fair. It's fun to kind of exaggerate them a little bit because they they look tough. take across there at the top. And put some more. Doing a lot with the little brush now. I need to switch back. switch the background and add some yellow. I'm going to try cool yellow at the top, but I'm going to add a little bit of uh, alizarin into the mix because, let's see. Hi, Valerie. been quiet on here today. I don't know where everybody is. So I'm glad you joined us. All right. I know 
you see these cows a lot over there. Okay, I'm trying to tone this color down a little bit. The green is a little too green. That looks better over there. It's not as much yellow. And then as I come down, I'll add some more warmth with the warmer yellow, but still use some alizarin crimson to uh, keep it from being too, too bright. And I'll also add in some darker value green in there. But I just want to get some green to start with. So what do I want to do next? I think more white. But I use different whites. Oh, something I just saw and I need to fix. Okay, better. All right. I'm going to use some gray, kind of a light gray mixed with some blue. I might need to mix a couple different blues. Yeah, that looks kind of good. Pick some in here. After you paint for a while, you start to see all these uh, shifts in color, even though they're kind of different versions of white. They're, some are cool and some are warm, and it makes a difference when you put them on there. Some people say, how can you paint an all-white dog or an all-white or all-black dog when I do pet portraits? I see colors. <laughs> They see different colors mixed in with those, with black and white. But I didn't when I first started. Okay. Put some of that gray in there, but I need to mix some more of that. Or I see it more on this side here. With the side that's in shadow. Even up in here some more. Over here. More in there. I see it in layers too. As I go, I'll notice more details. Ooh, that was a little dark, but that's okay. We can soften it. And I mix some more of my dark and go even darker up here. Oh, you know what? I just mixed purple. I picked up the wrong color. Thank you. 
shaking. Remember I talk about values, dark values. This is what I mean. There's just like a di different degrees of dark and light. And you just have to try to match up the correct darkness to lightness, if that makes sense. I never knew that before, that that's kind of a secret of painting. That's more important even than color. When you get those things right, it starts to have dimension. notifications turned off so. but I don't think I have all of them turned off okay so that needs I need to have some green come in there So this cow is going to go in a school show here at, uh, called Norfolk Academy. Getting it ready to post this week. I see some more red, so I'm going to go a little bit with some of that red. I love putting red in things. It's like my favorite color. Even though we don't see much there, I'm going to put a little bit just to be even. Over on this side here. Okay. So I've saved some of the light, two different lights. One is a warm white that has kind of the orangey. Uh, it's kind of an orangey white, or I see a little bit of orange in it. So we're going to put some some more of that in there. And then I mix, you can see I mix a little bit with what's there, so. Oops, just picked up some titanium. Oh well. I'm really loving this, these new brushes. I got the um, gift certificate for my birthday from the boys and bought some brushes made in England, a place called Rosemary and Company. And they're really nicely made. I've wanted them forever, so I asked for a gift certificate and I'm really excited. paid a little extra to have them get them within like five days. It was amazing. They shipped out within 30 minutes. And um, they're really not that much more expensive than ones I've been getting here, but I've just heard such good things about this company.
So I think he needs a little bit more. I shouldn't say he. It looks like a dairy cow. I'm sure it's a. I'll say it's a girl. Um, some more of this titanium buff, which is a little darker. He's got like bugs on top of his head and the reference on, I'm gonna leave those out. I just think that must be so annoying to have bugs landing on you all day. And to have tags in your ears, so that's why I don't paint those in. This needs more of a, a, a opaque color. I don't want to go too light with it. So I think I'll mix this Montserrat orange with some burnt sienna to Just lighten it a little bit in there. A little bit on that side. I like it when they start talking to me. This guy is coming to life, I think. to get too picky with individual hairs, but get something there. Because if I do, then it's distracting, I think. So you really want his face to be the main attraction. Right in here. Kind of creating this long bit here is a challenge. Do some there that helped a little bit. That sloping. They're really they are pretty long for there. And this is just an 8 by 10 canvas, so trying to get this big old head in there and make it look really long is important. Okay, I feel like I need to play with some color now again. I go back and forth between just the basics and just throwing color in there. This is a Naples orange. run out with one of my favorite run out of one of my favorite colors Naples yellow 
just kind of a it's not a bright yellow it's a it's a good one would be good on this I'm gonna see if I can squeeze some out of that the very end and you try to make it last if I can find it See, I rearranged re here. something else. All right. This doesn't look right yet. This is going to take some finessing. Oh, I know what I need is some light under there. It is catching some light underneath. That makes his face longer. Let's see what this looks like. That's a slightly lighter value, but I need to go darker in here. turn like that. I'm going to go back to his eye and put some of the St. Remy blue in there. There's just always a touch of blue. Or it looks better with a touch of blue anyway. And then I've got the eyelashes. I'm going to put this in here. It's to a point like right about here where I like to let it sit up set up a little bit which just means it won't be quite as um, oily it doesn't really dry for a while but I add a dryer to it and that does help it be a little bit more workable in the next couple of hours here and it goes down this way a little I think it's a little bit of a shadow from the, the eyelashes under here and it's very dark over here
Yeah. So I'll be adding more white where it's a little bit lighter in here and a little bit more dark. And I'll probably, I'll just show you a little bit on the green area. I'm going to mix a different green, not using the sap green, but uh, ultramarine blue. It's a little bit warmer, but also darker. And I will add some of the crimson in just to darken it a bit. You can see how in places it is darker in the background. And that helps to push it back in space a little. Lighter colors come forward and darker colors go back in space or give you that illusion. And cooler colors recede and warmer colors come forward. Although this is a kind of a warmer blue, I'm using the dark, the dark is happening. And it's always good to have a couple different values of a green because it looks more natural. Don't know that I'll put the flowery parts in. Got to get that red going up there. Good morning, Anne. Nice to have you join been very quiet on here this morning. I was trying to figure out if it was something to do with um, spring break in schools. I, um, but I don't know. I don't think it is spring break, so it's just a slow week. But I've really enjoyed using these new brushes from, to show you from, uh, these are the ones I haven't taken out yet, Rosemary and Company in England. I've been wanting them for years. I don't know why I didn't because, well, I guess it's because I, you know, you want to order more than one when you're ordering from someplace that far away and stuff. And... It was just always easier, I guess, to get it from the local place. Um, but they are really well made. And they literally shipped it out within maybe 30 minutes of my placing the order. Couldn't believe it. I thought Amazon was fast. I don't order brushes from Amazon, though. Okay. I think I'm getting to where I need to wrap things up, but you can see how the process gets started, and then it just will take a little bit more uh, tweaking uh, with the details. Um a little bit later today and then I'll post it. And if you have any ideas for a name, I'd love suggestions. Um, I found my uh, write out tool, I thought this was lost. Honestly, I don't remember where I found it even. It was just like stuck to something and fell out. And I was so happy because I didn't want to have to order a new one. Stuff like that, like little bits of light will help uh, describe things so that you can tell 
where the bone structure is underneath. And like right there, this sticks out more. And on the other side too. Anyway, this is really fun and um, I appreciate you stopping by. Um, this will be available on my uh, on my prof on my feed uh, as a recording, and I also put it on my blog and up on YouTube. Um, I really appreciate when people come spend time with me, and I plan on doing this again next Wednesday at nine. And I thank you so much, and I'll see you later. Have a great day.